and Brian. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we could uh, we could get started. Uh, um, if anyone else joins, they join. I see that uh, Mary Ann is on here this evening. She was on on. Uh, she's a new member. She was on our last meeting, but she only lasted a few minutes. I don't know what happened to her. That, Brian, that wasn't. Mary oh, that Ann wasn't her. I'm sorry. No, uh, Mary Ann, I'm sorry. You've been here before. I apologize. I've, I've uh, made a mistake. Oh, well, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mary Ann. Hi, Mary Ann. <laughs> Hi, Mary Ann. Marty on here, I want to do some uh, photographs for the newsletter cover. If anybody wants to drop them in the uh, Google Drive. Okay. Okay. Jim, I can't, uh, I don't see, I don't remember what that, or Cindy was her name. It was Cindy, because I wrote it down. Cindy Hotch, H-O-C-H, -H, yes. That's who we haven't heard from. Okay. All right, well, um, so Annie uh, was going to give us a program last, or the other day, on... Uh, Framing. Matting and framing. Framing and matting. Um, and, and not actually show us how to cut mats, I believe, because we did that before 700 times. Um, so, but Annie was unable to attend the meeting because of, you know, that thing that we have to go do once in a while called work. Yeah. It sucks. So, uh, so she's going to give her presentation tonight uh, during this meeting. Uh, so I'm going to turn the floor over to her and let her, let her do her talking. And then when she's done, we'll just continue on with our regular BS session. Um, sure. I think I'm going to try to raise my table here. Hold on. Give me a minute. My table has legs that goes up. Maybe I won't have to have a down, downward spiral with the computer. Okay, I'm taking off and she dumps everything off the table while she's doing I know. Like me, Brian. <laughs> we can see the ceiling now. <laughs> can you? That's a good thing for you. That's a little better. Maybe. All right, guys. So in, in the interest of keeping Annie uh Kind of main, kind of in the middle, or uh, in the in the main part of the screen. If y'all would uh, go ahead and mute yourself during her presentation, that'll keep noises and and other things from uh, taking her off the main screen and putting someone else up there. If you could do that. And with that, Andy, if you're ready, sure, we're listening. You're listening. I'm going out to get something to eat. I'll be back in about 20 minutes or so. Probably. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me not. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I just came from uh, Panera Bread. So. That's good. Hey, I hey. just want to let you guys know that the print that I'm using, this one here, I got it printed at Walmart last night. And it they do have the Epson printer um, to do the large prints. And I'm very happy with the quality of the prints that I got last night. So anybody wants to get anything printed at Walmart, I highly recommend it. It's, uh, I think, very high quality. So I'm very happy with that. Um, this is 
One of the reasons I started doing my own matting was because when I would crop a photo, it wasn't the way I wanted it. I wasn't a standard size. So I was like, okay, but I could put it, still put it in a standard size frame by doing that. I just have to cut my mats to fit it. So um, this photo is actually an odd size. Put my big, there it is. Um, it is actually uh, about 18 and a quarter. by 11 and a quarter. Um, I like leaving a white border. That's why my photo has a, the large white border around it. I like leaving a border. I usually leave a half inch around mine whenever I, I put the mat on. So I have my measurements already for that. Then I'm gonna flip my mat board over. Um, I'm going to put this in an 18 by 24 inch frame. So I need, on the long side, I need, I measured it to 19 and a quarter. So 24, 19 and a quarter, three fourths. So I need uh, to, to divide four and three, three fourths divided by two to give me my uh, side measurements. So it'll be two inches and three eighths. So I'm gonna measure in two and three eighths on the sides to give me my measurements for that. And I use a T-square to uh, make sure that that's squared off. When I draw my line. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. I'm gonna do two, there's a smaller roller. Two and three eighths come in from the side. Use my T square again. Draw that line. Now for the other side, I want the opening to be 12 and an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna subtract 12 and an eighth of an inch from 18. Seven, eight, 16. So I get five and seven eighths. So I end up with two and 15 sixteenths. of an inch that I need for my uh, sides. I'm gonna do the same thing, mark my sides. I can use my T-square.
and just double check my measurements. And then I'm going to write them on the on the outside of the board border, so I know whenever I get my cutting and that cutter out here in a second. Then I know exactly what I'm cutting. And for anybody that's interested, we have the cutter, the mat cutter that I am using, we the club owns one exactly like it if anybody wants to borrow it and use it. I'm gonna set this up. I gotta stand up. Table's too high. I'm going to start my cut. Now this level. Turn it. Huh. My blade must not be down far enough. It can go through. Yes, I know, Brian, you're laughing at me.
Disney World. I'll try this at home. There it goes. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Should have fallen right out. Don't know why. Should fall out. Anyway, take it out. Okay. This is my mat. Here's the first one. And um, take a piece of foam core. I'm going to center the picture. Couple different ways you can do that. Sometimes I use the mat, put it over, even that up. When I get it in the general area of where I think it should be, then I take my ruler and check. A half inch there. I wanted a half inch all around. So I'm good on the sides. Up and down. a little bit more.
Now we got it centered. Now we're going to fasten our photo down. Uh, we got it where we want it. Uh, for tonight, I'm going to use uh, these oversized photo corners. There's a lot of different ways you can uh, get your photo, fasten your photo down so it'll stay. Um, you can have a dry mounted, um, which is a uh, foam core with a adhesive that adhesive on it that will uh, permanently, with the use of heat, um, it takes. It totally flattens your uh, photo out and um, makes it one piece with the foam core. Uh, John Wacklow likes to do that with all of his. And you won't get any waves in your photos if you do that. Um, it's recommended whenever you do, do a dry mount to um, make sure it's something that could be replaced in case it would get ruined for some reason, the colors would run or fade or something in the dry mount machine because there's heat it gets applied to the dry mount. Um, because when uh, there's a special foam core that gets used or a special uh, plastic that we have that you can use with a regular foam core, and then it goes out in a, into a machine with uh, at 180 degrees for like five minutes and it makes it one piece. So it's a nice way to do it. Works well. Hey, Annie, um, I'm just gonna interrupt for a second. One sure. caution as far as those, you're using the extra large corners. Yes. And you can get away with the extra large because you've got your um, print on that larger sheet, if you will, with the white border. Because I know I don't do that. And what I found is I've got to use small corners in order to keep them from peeking through from underneath the mat. Right. So that's another advantage to uh, having the board, having the bit larger border uh, put on um, is that you can use the larger, the larger photo corners on it and it'll keep it. Um, I prefer them. Um, they also make uh, strips that you can use that I use all the time at work. Um, there are strips that they come in. It's a strip about this long that I use and it's about this wide. It's half, it's got plas plastic on it and um, we can cut them to size and then it'll go over the edges of the, uh, the, of the print or whatever other piece of artwork that we're framing. So it goes, it, it goes over the sides and uh, keep, helps to keep everything flat. And then anytime, anything that you would want to say down the road, you decide you don't like the mat, you don't like something, you want it redone, it's not going to hurt the photo. There's nothing, no adhesive that actually touches your artwork whatsoever. It's just a, a strip that we use and sometimes we have to trim it. So like Jim said, you don't, uh, you don't see it sticking out from under the mat. But you should always try to use, if you're gonna, gonna um, frame something, you should always try to use acid-free mat boards and acid-free foam core. And then for the, uh, to keep the mat on the top, we use um, AGT tape, which is also acid free. And it would go. Oops. 
getting stuck. Um, the AGT tape would go down the sides. Now there's several ways you can you can do the mat. You can use the AGT tape, which will permanently adhere to this. You can also use, um, I have some here somewhere. Um, it's a linen, linen tape and you can make a hinge on here. Um, where the heck did it go? There it is. This is, it's called a hinge, it's a hinge tape that you can use, it's a linen tape. You can uh, do your mat, you can make a hint, literally make a hinge with the mat. You would flatten out the mat. Put the tape down, make a hinge. Yeah. Arms aren't long enough. Make a hinge, and then this would just come over. And then your mat would be stay flat on there. You can do it that way. Or you could do you instead of making a full hinge, you could take the tape. You can take the linen tape and you can make a T with it like this. And you can put it the whole way around. You can put it on all sides of your uh, mat. And this, the shorter side would go underneath the mat. And then the long piece, these two would uh, be adhered together. And then you would take this piece and put it down around the back of your foam, foam core board. And that's, you can do that on all this, all different sides of the uh, the mat. That'll also keep it on there, and it keeps it off the artwork. Annie, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the purpose of the two pieces of tape. Would you show that? Yeah, again, you can make it. Yeah, you make a T with it, like this. You make a T. This part here goes, attaches itself to the back of the mat board. You would make like a, a hinge. Can't see that. You would make a hinge with it. It would attach it there. And then the long piece that's left, you would take it and and just uh, tuck it around your foam core and make a literally make a hinge with it. It would go underneath underneath the foam core right here. Okay, now I understand. Now, so and I understand that that would work. Is there any advantage to, to that of just using a single piece of the tape and make the hinge out of it? Um. Yeah, it it just depends on on the piece of artwork you have and how it's how it's in there. Sometimes I use this if the uh, the piece of artwork is like clear up to like the edge where I can't use the AGT tape to fasten this on. Um, say your artwork would be like clear up up against. Um, the edge of your mat board and clear up against the uh, the edge of your foam, clear to the edge of your foam core. 
then you wouldn't have room to put your tape on on the foam pour down here without it getting on your artwork. So the advantage to using the T is so that it does not get on your artwork at all. The only thing that it sticks to is your your mat board and your foam pour. Okay. So that's the, that's the one of the reasons you would use uh, you know use the tape and, and make a T like that. Because whenever you use the, when you make a hinge, I'll put that over my head. Um, when you make the hinge, of course, then you have to have the empty space above your artwork in order to put the tape on your foam core. Does that make sense, Jim? Jim, does that make sense? I was really responding, but I was muted. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, and then the other thing that you would do after that, after you would get your pieces put together, would be to put it in your frame. And of course, you can get whatever kind of frame you want, put whatever kind of glass you want in it. Um, the glass that I have in this, this frame is, co is called Masterpiece Glass. It's a non-glare, uh, non-glare glass. It's also UV protected glass so that your artwork doesn't get, you can see your artwork very clearly with it. You know, get a whole lot of glare. And you want to fasten it in there. And because I don't have a, a, a gun that shoots points, when I have piece like this. First of all, I would have a second piece of foam core to go in there to bring it up a little higher instead of it being down so low. I have a lot of space in here. So I put a second piece of foam core in here and bring it up a little bit. And then I would take my offsets. These aren't deep enough for what I want. I would have to get another piece of foam core in there. Um, these are, they're little metal pieces. They're called offsets. I don't know if anybody can, can you see that? And you would take the offsets. The one side would go, the side with the hole in it would go on the frame. You would screw it in there. I would, you would need bigger ones than these for this one or another piece of foam core. You would screw them onto the frame and then that would keep your artwork in place. That keeps everything in there. Use several of these around, around the, uh, the edge. And then that would keep your artwork in there. I think I left the hangers upstairs. And then you would put your hangers on here and your wire across the back. I generally use uh, the wire that I would use on this would be a, a plastic coated wire. Um, I usually put a 50, use the uh, 50 pound um, test wire on it just so that um, I would rather have a wire that would hold more than what, more weight than what I'm holding up than something that holds, you know, a smaller amount of weight. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, I have unfortunately had um, artwork been knocked off the wall um, at a show that has, you know, 
broken my frame, but um, we've had other pieces of artwork because the wire's not been strong enough, fall off walls. So you're better off with a heavier piece of wire than with a lighter weight wire. Whenever Why, excuse me. Why plastic coated? It just it just holds better. The uh, the plastic coated will hold up for a longer period of time. The wire that is not coated, um, I've been getting a lot of pieces that come in that have that, and it just it ends up um, rusting over time whenever it doesn't have the plastic coating over. It. Just easier to use. All the way around, and it's be it's better for uh, usage in the long run, especially if you're going to reuse a frame. You know, because we do different shows, and I'm sure that you know framing gets expensive. Uh, there's, no, there's no doubt about it. Um, most of the frames that I have, whenever I we've been doing shows, I have reused those frames over and over again, and. Um, it gets expensive. Um, if you buy a quality frame, you should be able to reuse it numerous times for different shows. Um, if you buy something less expensive, which sometimes that also works for a while, you know, you you can get several uses out of it too. Because I know Brian's used a couple of different frames that haven't been real expensive for different shows, and they can look nice too. Um, it just depends on what you want to, uh, you know, on your budget. You can buy some nice frames, but, you know, you should always look for them to be on sale someplace. Um, you know, if you get a standard size frame or whatever, um, it's, you know, there's, you have good frames, you have, you know, less expensive frames, but, I have some that are less expensive. I have some that are more expensive. And they've all held up pretty well, as long as they're not knocked off the wall. <laughs> so anybody have any questions? I just have, now how do you attach your wire to your um, uh, eye screw? Like I just kind of wrap it around. Now, do you do a special type of attachment to your eye screw? Well, I. Yeah, whenever I put it on, I left my uh, my hangers upstairs for some reason, like a dum dum. Um, but yeah, I put a knot in 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 it first, and then I put another another knot in it, and then I do a spiral wrap with the rest of the wire on it, and it's like really tight and up up close. Um, I didn't. I didn't put the the backing on here, so um, I could show you how to do that. But I don't even know if you could be able to see it on the on here. Um, but yeah, when I I put the wire on, I I wrap it really tight. Um, I used to spread it out, and I have learned not to do that. It's if you start it, you know, twirl it around. But just keep it up tight against each other. It it it'll it'll stay. It's not going to unravel. But you should always leave yourself. Uh, I'm going to say at least six inches of wire to to be able to do that. Like whenever you put it through your hoop, then leave yourself like six inches of wire on each end, so that you have it to make your loops to to do your knots and then to wrap it around. And then it should not unravel. Shouldn't come undone. Should stay for a long time. Anybody else? How much? Uh, was nobody your, else has any questions. How much was your uh, print at Walmart? Um. 11 bucks. Hmm. Okay. They were printed out to 16 by 20s. What kind of paper? Um, it says it's a matte paper, but it's kind of a, I don't know. It's pretty nice. Okay. 
It says it's a matte paper, but it actually has it has a glossy look to it. But I think it turned out pretty well. I mean, all the details in the in have shown up in the photo, and the colors are just really, really, really pretty. Um, so I'm very pleased with the with the quality of the print that I got from there. They both turned out you? really nice. Which Sorry, you sent that online. Like well, I tried to send it. I tried to send it online, and I don't know if somebody was saying something about Walmart's website was down. Um, I could not get it to go through, so I just took a download, uploaded my photos onto a flash drive, and took them up mm -hmm. and had them within an hour. Okay, that's the one out in Greensburg. Yeah, it's the one I stopped at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We made everything look easy, Annie. <laughs> no, it's not. I may have had some more practice at it over the last few months. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's um, definitely gotten easier, but I'm getting spoiled using the, I uh, made everything look a little easier because I cut my foam core, my mat boards at work on the wall cutter before. <laughs> After I bought them. <laughs> so I bought the sheets of uh, mat board at work and then I just cut them to the size that I needed so that just to, to speed things up here because normally I just cut I cut everything by hand on this table which is not very big I don't have a whole lot of room but you know I've been making it work for quite a while so you cheated I cheated. Yes, I did. I cheated. I used the wall cutter that took me like, instead of it taking me um, 10 minutes to cut a sheet, cut a 16 by in 18 by 24 sheet of mat board, it took me uh, less than two. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I cheated. So, but I did it on my own time, not company. So, but it's, it's okay. It's something I'm allowed to do. So yeah, I, I cheated. I, I pre-cut, pre-cut my board so that I had them ready to go whenever I got here. You did good tonight, Amy. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? So when are you going to do ours? <laughs> <laughs> How much are you going to pay me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't mind helping anybody out. Anybody needs needs help with it, let me know. I will gladly help you out. No problem. Is Brian there? I think he fell asleep. Should I get my whistle? It's just sitting right next to me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I was looking at yeah. Uh, cryptocurrency prices. Cryptocurrency, huh? Yeah. So anyway. That's the best I can do in under, under these circumstances with, with being able to show you anything. No, you did fine. So. Thanks, Annie. You're welcome. And thank you, Annie. You're welcome. Thank you. So like I said, anybody else have any questions? Mary Ann, do you have any questions? Candy? No, you did a good job. You did a good job. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. That was a good presentation. So if anybody needs any help, don't hesitate to ask. And I will gladly give you a hand. Well, we did not do any critiquing at uh, the Monday night meeting. Did you all want to do critiquing tonight? <coughs> Whatever you guys want to do, go ahead. Yay or nay? 
Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Unless y'all want to do something else, speak up now or. Who all's going? Uh, who all's going to the uh, walk? That's this Sunday, right? Yes. Who's going? I am. Pat and I. I believe Dennis and Barbara are going. I think I'm going to go. I saw that you can still get a <clears throat> ticket. So. Okay, I haven't haven't looked. We can still get tickets. Yeah. And I believe Rex and Carol are going too, from if I remember correctly. Rex said he already got his ticket. Okay, good. I have to get mine. Okay. Oh, um, Annie or anyone else who wants to chime in on this. Earlier on, Annie, you'd mentioned like, particularly when you were talking about the takes that it be archival. So I, I understand the need for like anything that would be touching your print, like yes. the photo portion of the print, I'm gonna say. But mm -hmm. what advantage is there to, rather than using just regular tape? For instance, like your, um, your connecting tape to uh, connect the, uh, the the mat board the, the, the mat to the backboard. Mm -hmm. Why does that need to be archival? The the mat should be archival uh, or acid acid free, just like your mat, just to help keep help preserve your uh, your artwork, whether it's a photo or whether it's something else. You know, it just the um, not having the acid in there just uh, helps to keep it from uh, deteriorating. Well, just to take it one step further. So okay. like for instance, the tape is the best example I can think of. It's, I'll call it out of sight, out of mind. It's not really touching the photograph itself. Uh, no, the tape does not touch the photograph at all. Uh, the tape is on the outside edge. Um, it is, um, and it is also acid free. As far as that goes, what the, the AGT tape that, that's used is acid free. Well, that's what I'm asking. Why, why is that necessary? Well, like I said, it helps to keep everything from deteriorating over time. Um, if there was the if the acid was in there, the acid would slowly but surely it eats away at the uh, at the materials that you have. So anything anything that you use, you want it to be acid free, so it'll preserve help preserve it and make your artwork it makes your artwork uh, last a lot longer. Okay. I mean, it's just like anything else that that has acid in it. It you know it's going to eat, acid eats away at anything. So, you know, if it's something that's not too important to you, then it doesn't really matter. But, you know, if you're doing it to sell it to somebody and hopefully it lasts for a long time, then you want your materials to all be acid free. Whether it's, you know, the tape, the mats, the foam core, all of it should be acid free. And just like um, even your glass, that you use should have, even if it's not the non-glare glass, um, our regular glass has a UV protectant on it so that whenever the, if, if you have your artwork in a room that has sun coming in the window, um, the UV protectant on the glass is gonna keep your, your artwork from fading. So there's different, different aspects for it. And also the, the main purpose Besides looking nice, you know, whenever you put a mat on a piece of artwork, um, 
the mat also has a second, um, it's also used to keep your artwork off of the glass, which also gives you um, some air, air circulating inside there, which keeps the condensation off of your, helps to keep your condensation off your artwork. A lot of people don't know that. Um, when you have anything that's in a frame, if you don't have a mat in there and you can't have that air circulation in there, you will get condensation in your in there in the frame. That's why you've seen a lot of the old fashioned fashion uh, photos that have been in frames that don't have any kind of mat in there stuck to the glass because over time that's what happens. It gets you get condensation in there. It gets it moistens up your your uh, photo or your artwork, and then it ends up stuck to the glass. Does that help you out, Jim? Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else? Yes, no. Everybody's too quiet. Brian, you awake? Nope. Okay. Wake Brian up when it's time to shut us off. So Margie, was you going to uh, do some critiquing? Yeah, I could do it. Yeah, let's, let's okay. do it. Okay. Y'all see this? I don't see anything except the blank, black screen. How about now? Okay. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Everybody else have it? Yep. I'm going to go through the critiques. I think there's just a few of them in here. Some of them we've already did. Okay, go for it. There's some flowers. Yep. They're pretty. I'm assuming you didn't take this yesterday. I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> what gave that clip? What gave that away? Uh, Go the, for it. The first thing I noticed, I like the uh, large white cloud behind the large sunflower. It sets it off. Yeah, your eye is, you know, definitely directed toward that. Come on, people. I'm not crazy about the right side of that. This? Yeah. Okay, why? I don't know, it just looks clustered. It just doesn't add, to me, it doesn't add anything to the photo. Um, I think because the sunflowers are facing the other direction and they're not facing forward. The ones that are catching my eye are the three that are here in the front and that are looking more towards us. I would crop out those, that right side. Right about here? Yep. I'm with Annie right on that one. What was that? I'm with Annie on that. Make it a square crop. Okay. I agree. All righty. Yeah, I just, it's, 
just to me, it just doesn't add anything to it. But I really like the the big sunflower that's on the left hand side. I think maybe I would have moved over a little bit more so that oh, I would have. Yeah, have a little bit. Bit. yeah, it's uh, really dead on the other side too. Oh, okay. I, the field was on its last legs when I went up there. Mm -hmm. Which was not easy to get up to. So a lot of tripping and falling to get where it was. With but I agree. With the tripping, the tripping and falling is just normal for you. Oh, it is. <laughs> Which field not, was that, Margie? Which huh? field, which field was that? It is in the. It was off of thirty. You know where they sell pumpkins and apples and corn yeah. and yeah. all of that. By St. Vincent's. No, on up the road. Um, if you uh, you have to get permission, and you know I did a little bit of begging, and I was able to take my car so far back and then I had to go over the rough pasture with my car. Then I had to walk quite a bit of ways because they were all facing one way and my car was on the other side of where they're facing. And you had to go through a patch of gourds of all kinds of gourds and just kept walking until you could get a good view of some of the sunflowers. So many of them were on the way out, I guess you can see. If you look in there, you can see some of them are just, okay, that's it. I'm over with it. So Margie, yeah. would, would you mind explaining where along Route 30? Uh, let me see. If you go from Ligonier, past the Trobe, on your left-hand side, and it's past the uh, fireplace place, I think they always have pumpkins in the field at yeah. Halloween. Across from St. Vincent, if you will. Yes, that's what I just said. <laughs> well, it's up from, isn't it up from St. Vincent? You may no, be it's, actually, it's not much. It's, it's, it's right by, close it's to by St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Yeah. It's by it, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know what farm you're talking about now. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, they're always parked there. They have pumpkins in one time and they sell other stuff at other times. Right, right. Okay, we're gonna go back. Sandy. Yep. And my yep. I wasn't taken recently either. No, she's really blind in both eyes, just about. Very old dog. Very old puppy dog. I like I, that picture. I like the way the clouds are in the background. I like the, the look, you know, the happy look on the dog. I think your lighting's good on her. Any other comments? So Margie, um, I, I assume you somehow post-processed the clouds so that the blue wasn't quite as blue, but I like that look. Um, and I like the depth of field. The grass is a bit too overcomingly green for me. I would have toned down the green a little bit, I think. Okay. I think there's only one thing about the sky that um, bothers me a little bit on the left, that round, yeah, right there. And the only reason, because I keep looking at it, <laughs> you know, instead of like, um, I'll look at the dog and then my eye goes up to that round. Mine does too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can clone that out without yeah. a problem and at all. It's not bad, but... I think it might work bet better without it. Yeah, because I do have a tendency, my eyes will go up over after I look at Sandy. It does go on over there. Very sunny day. 
as you can see, the sun is really hitting the grass. It's sitting sandy. So it's a, it was a very nice sunny day. So clone this out, you say, and tone down. What, tone down the yellow in the grass or what? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, grass has a lot of yellows in it. I just think it's it's overly too bright. I would desaturate the grass, whether it's the yellows or the yellows and the greens, or just, just the bring it down a little bit. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Everybody else feel the same way, or or what? Yes. Okay. It almost looks like artificial grass compared to your background. So yeah, toning it down would help. Okay. Well, the background is really out of focus pretty much. I know, but you have like that nice brown from the fall and then you have this bright green. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I mute it too much, it, I don't know. I'll give it a try and see what happens. It's okay. sure worth a try, I can tell you that much. Okay. Well, hey, Margie, just out of curiosity, I assume that you muted the blue sky. Is that I brought correct? the blue sky up. Pardon me? I brought it up. It was muted and I brought it up. Okay, well, I like the way it's done. I would do the same thing that you did to the blue sky, I would do to the green grass. Okay. So bring it on down. Mute it a little bit anyway. Just bring it down a little bit. Because I really do like the green grass. Um, I like the way the sun hits the green grass and hits her and it sort of outlines her. But I will go ahead and try it your way too, Jim, and mute it down a little bit, but I don't want to mute it as much as the sky because then I think it would not emphasize her. It, it's sort of, I want Sandy to be, stand out. Right. And I like the sunshine on the grass. I do too. My eye goes to where the grass on the right side meets the tree. It looks like there's almost like a line. It just looks like maybe you pasted it on there. Yeah, nope, I didn't. That's and the way it, it actually looks. You saturate it a little bit back and even do like a gradient. It might help. Yeah. Actually, that's exactly how it looks too, you know. Well, of course. I'm sure it is. It's just... um, but I'll definitely mute it a little bit and see what happens. You know, it's well worth a try. And if I like it, fine. If I don't, well, I don't. But I do want to get the ball out. I do know that. What, Margie, psychologically, since it's your dog, I mean, you look, you're looking at the dog. Yeah. It's not my dog. I'm looking at a photograph and I see a cute little dog, but then I see an awful lot of really bright green grass. Yeah. That's when I said, I'll go ahead and definitely bring it down and see if I like it or not. And if I like it, I'll keep it there. If I don't, well, I will bring it back up again, you know, but. Uh, it's Margie's world. It can it's, well, it's my artwork, yeah. Everybody must understand when you're critiquing, it's wonderful to be able to get everybody's input so we can try it a different way, but it's your artwork. You don't have to do what anybody says. This is your artwork. That is their opinion. And that's all part of the critiquing. So I love the idea of my, all of my photos being critiqued because it makes me look at it a different way you know and what, try Margie, out a different way. And then if I don't like any of the ways y'all mentioned, then I put it right back the way I like it. And that's what it's about. <laughs> I love Margie, that. Again, I, I agree with everything you just said. As a, for instance, the grass on the left side of the dog is a more subtle green than the grass on the right side. 
if nothing else, you could, if you could bring the right side grass to be a little less bright in something similar to the grass on the left. Yeah, and you can see where the sun is because you can see the shadows over here and the sun is actually on this side. Yeah. I love how the light is hitting your little puppy there. I mean, the what? I said I like how the, the sun is almost perfect on the dog. Yeah. And highlighting, say, what did you say her name was, Sandy? Sandy, Sandy. yeah. yeah. Almost perfect on, on the dog. I, I just love the lighting on the dog. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to take a little bit of the yellow out of the grass because I thought it had a little bit too much yellow in it. And that should tone it down a little bit. And if nothing else, I'll tone down the grass too. But it's good to see your all's points so that I can give it a try. That's what it's all about. All right, Morgan. Do you think a vertical crop would work on that? I don't want to do a vertical crop, but uh, I did try it and I did not care for it as much. Uh, my problem I was having was trying to, because this is the way it is, it's all brown back here and then the sun hit this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know whether I should add sunlight to the back or whether I should bring it down, you know, because this was, it's like this, this is what it looks like. But it looks, I don't know, it's, it's, it was like y'all are saying, it's like there's three, three layers, like they were added from three different photos almost, but they're not. So it's a little bit, uh, what the, this part here mm. is uh, what bothered me. But I wanted it out of focus. I don't want any of that in focus. Mm hmm so I'm going to work on the grass and see what I can come up with. Did you did you make the out of focus on your own? Yeah. In Photoshop? No. No, I uh, I did the uh, shallow depth of field. The reason I asked is because the cloud on the left hand side, that little that little round cloud, uh huh, is is in focus yet your trees are out of focus and it's the same focal plane. Yeah. That's the reason I thought maybe you added your own out of focus. <coughs> no. No, I sure didn't. I just stood back and zoomed in and took the picture. The sky is a sky I added. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh, that, that explains a few things. Thank you, Margie. Yeah, that explains how everything in the sky is in focus, yet the 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 ground's not. That was my question. I was thrown off by focal planes and mm -hmm. stuff being out of focus and in focus in the same length. Well, this sky here is a bit out of focus. I made it out of focus. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, at the depth of field that you have and how out of focus your trees are, those clouds uh -huh. in the background should be out of focus. I'll just take it back and out of focus it some more. <laughs> yeah, just because I bit. did make it out of focus, as you can see, it's yeah. It there, but focus. if you that cloud on the left, that little round oh, ball, yeah, it's got way too much detail in it for yeah. It keeps throwing me off. Yeah, me too. I'm, I can clone that out, but I'll make the sky a little bit more out of focus. But you can see all through here how much out of focus it is. Yeah. Well, Margie, now that you tell me you put a sky in, and I, I guess I really didn't know what about the photo other than the bright green grass, and I, but I commented, did you tone down the blues? The, if you just look at the sky itself is really cool, but mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like the sky matches the conditions on the ground around the dog. The sky is almost, very close to what the actual sky was. I added the clouds to it. The coloring of the sky on the original picture is solid blue, but it's that blue are a little bit lighter. And I add a little bit more depth to it, uh, you know, uh, the clouds and then I made it uh, out of focus some. 
but it is that color, the actual sky. It just didn't have clouds in it. So I'll go ahead, get rid of the ball, the cotton ball, and then I'll go ahead and put it a little bit more out of focus in the sky, which will be very easy to do. And I will go ahead and tone down the green, maybe get, I don't wanna, you know, the way the sun hits, if you tone it down too much, you're not getting that sunlight that shines on the dog. So I'll tone it down some so that you still get some of that sunlight. I don't want it to look so artificial that it, uh, it doesn't look like there is a sun shining here and on the dog, mm -hmm. which of course it is because here's the shadow over here, you know, you can see that. So that's some good points. Very good points. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, here's one of Rex's. Let's clarify, that is not one of Rex's pictures. That's Autumn's. This is Autumn Stanky. This was a, a photograph of hers that he posted oh, to okay. ask for a critique of it. So um, it is not a Rex picture. It is okay. a picture right. of, from Autumn Stanky. All righty. But he still wants a critique, so. There's a lot of money in that, in that hanger. <laughs> it's not part of the critique. <laughs> okay. I wish I had one of those. <laughs> I particularly don't care for this picture. I'm not excited by it. Uh, it's a promotional picture is what it is, and it does its job. But as far as a photography-wise, I understand lighting and all that kind of stuff. She spent a lot of time with that, but I don't like it. The flag is not dead center in the picture. Yeah. I understand she she couldn't fix that because that's where they put the damn flag. Uh, <laughs> but right. it's just the sky doesn't look right to me. It's it's the picture the 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 roof looks like it's leaning to the right. I don't know. I'm just not, I'm not excited about this picture. I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it. And I just, there's something about it that does not make sense to me. To me, everything too almost much looks white. like a model. What, what did you say? Alan, what did you just say? I said, to me, everything looks like it's a model. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought too, Alan. Probably would have been better without the sky in it at all and maybe um i don't know down a little lower like you're kind of looking down on it maybe a, a bit of a different angle too it looks like she's probably standing on a ladder to take that yeah oh uh, she was in a, a uh, i believe a boom truck to take that picture uh, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand the purpose of the picture is perfect for what they used it for. Like I said, it's, it's a promotional picture for them to show their, their airplanes and stuff like that. But I, it just photography wise, it just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me at all. I'm confused by it. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it's a photo and it's like, okay, there's our airplanes. Cool. Now yeah. on to the next thing. What do you like about it? All photos, we need to find something you like about it. It's in focus. It's well lit. Okay, good. There we go. All right. Yeah, when you're critiquing- better with a bunch of square bodies in it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this is Rex's. This is Rex's picture, yes. That's neat. <laughs> Did he yeah. ever say how it was made? Made, if you look close, it, it was done with somebody's skis. They stood in the middle and they just yep. walked. They, they sure moved around. Did. Yep. They sure did. 
Wow. Yep, they skied in and they skied out. Mm -hmm. All right, we start with something good that you like about the picture. I think it's pretty cool. Just the, the idea of somebody doing that. Yeah, it's a neat concept. I like it. I like the idea of it. I wish it was taken from the other way, though, and you could, because he, he named it, what, dandelion or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Which I would rather see the stem coming through the bottom of the picture instead of going out the top of the picture. Yeah. But I think it's pretty cool, and it's, a, you know, it's definitely appropriately named. It looks pretty cool, and it looks like a dandelion. Yep. This is that stuff there you don't need to be no it, it i you know let's just uh clone this out and uh cut this over because if you cut this down i'm afraid you cut right through the dandelion but you can clone this baby out without any problem at all yeah, while you're the cloning that out the sewer cover that's black adjacent to it yeah just I'd get rid of that as well yeah content aware will take care of that too so, yeah, Photoshop that out and that, and then I think it would really be pretty good. I think it would. Anything else, anybody? No? Mm -mm. I looking at it to see if if you crop the horizontal crop across and got rid of the houses and the trees and stuff and then flipped it so the stem would be at the bottom <laughs> yeah to see how it looks yeah that's an idea it definitely is get rid of that stuff yeah. over here and then flip it at the bottom of that brown on that house just crop it across there and then crop it. Yeah. That's a good idea. You see what it looks like flipped. You know, I guess I'm kind of weird, but I I like it um, with the dandelion in the front and the trail in the back because it makes me think that you know the skier started there made the dandelion head and then skied off into the sunset so <laughs> that's kind of the, what i yeah. was thinking when i first yeah. saw it yeah i like create I, I i like seeing photos that are creative As y'all know, I don't like white flowers. Dennis has a couple of good ones. Other than that, I don't like white flowers. I'm a master gardener. Flowers have color, unless they are made to be white. But I like the way he did the background on this to bring some color into it. Mm -hmm. But that's just me, you know. But well, that's uh, interesting because the one thing I don't like about this is the color or whatever color you would call that oh i just it's just me i just don't like that color no oh, i really really like it i like the softness of it i'm kind of with you <laughs> what marty you I, said, I really don't like the pink background i love the detail in the whites and the shadows of the flower but I'm not a fan of the pink. I think the pink adds a softness to it. And like I said, a pure white flower is really, unless it's a daisy, uh, really does not belong in photography unless it's something like what Dennis has done. My personal opinion. So adding some color to it has helped overcome 
the stark not whiteness of this this flower. So it makes me think of a ballerina. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very precious, very delicate. And there's where we are at. We all have our own opinion. And that's what makes these critiquing so great. Anybody else? See, I like the lighting along the stem. And then we come to a white flower. I would venture that that's, is that exactly the same flop? Probably the same photo. Yeah. And he replaced it with the pink background. That certainly looks like it. Mm hmm Yeah, the, it's not enough depth of field on this. I like the way the light shines through the flower, but really it's the depth of field is just too in focus. And it's a white flower. If that's the same one. It seems to me that he lost some of the details whenever he changed the background on it in the flower. I don't think that there's as many de details in that last one in the petals. Oh, like the veins, you mean, Annie? What's that? I, I'm not sure veins is the technical term, but the veins, I'll call them. Yeah. I think some of them were missing on the other one, uh, especially on that center, on that center petal. I think he lost some of the details. He did. <laughs> She's right. Well, you can see the detail on them. Yeah, yeah, but not as much as you can on the other one. That's right. No, it's about the same. Mm, no, I can see more details in this one. I don't know why. But I can't, I think. I think because the pink kind of washes it out. If it was a darker background, it would look nicer, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he had a different, even a different, uh, the flower had maybe a tint of yellow or a tint of color to it. I think that would have been great and then just did something with the background. The background on this here really, really is disturbing me. Well, I know it's not this photo, but that previous one, I told you I didn't like the pink, but now I know why as well. And it kind of goes along, Margie, to your comment that you think flowers are about color. So that previous Most one them. is turned Most into a quote black and white, but it's not black and white. It's white and pink and whereas mm -hmm. the the color should be on the flower it's on the background it just like it's yeah. opposite of what it should be yeah yeah but it has color like i said about the only one i've seen that is a black and white unless it's a black i mean a, a white flower would be like dennis he has a a way of capturing a death like i've never seen before and he's the first white flower that I have ever voted on. It's just um, something he has done with his flowers that make them really nice in black and white. But I've taken millions of pictures of flowers and I've had to document them also, you know, for Texas a and and et cetera. So when I see just a black and white flower, it's just lacks, lacking to me. But that is only my opinion, and it's just because of my history that I feel that way. When I plant my garden, I do have white flowers in my garden. 
uh, but I try to plant accordingly to not only the texture, but the colors and what blends in with each other. So I'm always looking at that and seeing something like this, it just really is, no, it doesn't work in my opinion. Where y'all may think it's fantastic, which is great, you know, that's what it's all about when it comes to critiquing. Okay. I think we should all post some white flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea, Ken. You guys have been doing Great a good idea. job of white flowers. Did we get this one last time that we critiqued? I think we got this one. Yeah, we, I know we got that one. We did the Foggy yeah. Mountain one. I don't think we did the wallflower. Okay. What I like about this, I like this part right back here. Okay, everybody. Click on it. Let me bring it up. I'm sorry. There you go. <laughs> I would like to have seen more stem in here. I really like this one. I like the way the, the light hits it and then the shadows. So are you saying you would just crop it and use that flower and not have the other one in there at all? Actually, that's not a bad idea and have a stem, maybe flip it so the stem is coming out this way and um, making a minimalist picture and get rid of all this other. Maybe transform, use your transform tool to go ahead and enlarge this and uh, make a minimus picture out of it. You can even drag this after you enlarge it, maybe down here and flip it, do whatever you want with it. Just play around because I like this. This part here looks like there's no detail. I see yeah. a tiny bit here, but not much. I'm not crazy about the composition at all. But I do like that. So I, yeah. Margie, I, I agree with the, the upper corner, but that, that adds to the photo in the front. It would have been nice and maybe it's there and, and it's just been darkened out. It would be nice if there was a connection between the two, like the stem, if you will, from the upper right. It looks like it's actually there, maybe. Yeah, right through here. Yeah, um, just to kind of tie them together rather yeah. than being separated in space. But if you would zoom back out, um, there's a couple of white blobs hanging in the middle there that I'd probably get rid of. That one, that one in particular, below the upper right one, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the stem between the two would be nice and blot out so those. Just, you have a stem here, you have a stem here, stem here, but I still, this one here, I think it uh, doesn't have enough detail in it. I can see a little bit of detail here, a little bit here, here, and here. Then it goes like this, it's like blown out, no detail to it. So I would really get rid of that, use your transform tool, enlarge this and make a minimus out of it. And maybe, like I said, bring it down here and flip it so that the stem is coming out down here. Then you have that flower. It's just different things. Or even just crop it. If nothing else, crop it here and here. And then you've got this here lighting up the stem so it goes down into the corner. Anybody else? No? You know, I have to say something about photos that I look at on here. You guys are freaking good. 
I've seen so many in that photographer's choice. It is just unbelievable what kind of talent this club has got. Okay. And uh, let me go back up here. Uh, search by category. How come we don't have more? In the, oh, yeah, I guess I should get out of that part. Okay, where, where, where? Go ahead. I'm sorry. How come I don't have a box? Jeez. What are you trying to do, Margie? January. Was it? Today is, this is February. So this is our last one, right? Mm -hmm. This is our last uh, photographers. Yes. Yeah. All right, this is Jim's, Harry Stairs. I really like, I'm sorry, but I, li I like the vines. I really do. Go ahead, people. Where is this, Jim? I don't is think he, Jim's on the call, is he? No, you, oh, is this, this is a new Jim. It was this the other Jim. Oh, goodness. I need to start looking at names, huh? Okay. I do like the, the vines and like the gates and stuff. Go Looks ahead. Like it's an old school somewhere. I'd like to go inside of that place. Mm. Ryan? <laughs> Annie? Yep. Annie? <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. I know. I know. <laughs> right, Ryan? Like no, it definitely wouldn't be the first time. No, no. Uh, all we need is a hammer. Maybe uh, a crowbar. I'm sure there's a window open somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and shove Randy through it and she can find us an easier way to get through. Um, hopefully not through the floor. Well, this is very symmetric, which is nice. I mm -hmm. think it needs a little bit of uh, to it. What does that mean? Uh, more contrast, more in depth. It's sort of flat. You know, oof, it needs that. <laughs> it's, might, sort of, it's sort of flat. Flat. Thank you. Yes. I mean, just, I like I like the idea. I like the call the idea. You know, because it's an an old building but it doesn't have like it's not like a it's a building so it should be kind of 3d yeah uh, yeah but it's just there yeah it needs to be taken up to the next level more oomph as i said more contrast more it needs to be black and white no it does not yes it does no it yes, does it does. not sepia tones no. Black and white guy. That's all you like is black and white. Uh, by the way, Brian and I do this all the time. We'll be in the same car. He's driving. He says, oh, that's a nice black and white picture. And I fuss with him every time. I'm a colored person. I like my color. And he likes his black and white. Yep. And but I sit in the back and laugh. At, I sit in the front and laugh at both of you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But yeah, I think uh, just taking it up a notch as far as the contrast goes, I think would really make it nice. Definitely try the black and white for Brian to see if it looks nice that way too. Yeah, we but should I, tell Jim to uh, put another one on there in black and white to see what it looks like. I, I'd be interested to see. Yeah, this is where taking these photos and processing them like we did last time really would help us out. Mm -hmm. Here's another one of gems. Let me see if I can catch somebody else. These are all gems. 
This here is uh, Carolyn's. Wouldn't you love to know where she got her toothpicks? <laughs> well, especially since it says used. <laughs> yeah, they don't yeah. Yeah. look like they're burnt. That's pretty disgusting. Just a bit. But... Yeah, I really don't um, want to know who was using them to turn them out that color. Well, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's hope they were used like in an arts and crafts project. I'm kind of thinking. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, they, they look, good, look like they were half burnt and yes. had all kinds of crap all over them. And... Yeah. But it's interesting. It's a different type of photo. It's very interesting. You know, it's not your everyday type. Yeah, it looks like kind of like they're in paint. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Arts and crafts. I don't know the where Carolyn goes in the weirdest places, so it could be <laughs> any place. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Here's another one of Carolyn's. No, that's just cold looking. It's a, a good picture. It's, it's just a bit out of focus. I would like to have seen it sharper. Anybody else? That's a difficult photo to take um, because if, if the depth of field is narrow enough to kind of get rid of the, the stuff in the background, if you will, so that those leaves in the front of the rhododendron stand out a little bit. Um, you're, because there's so much width within the rhododendron itself, it's, there's probably gonna be some out of focus sections of it, which would probably need to do focus stacking so that everything in that front butt is sharp, but everything in the back is. Well, she almost, down. yeah, she almost did the shallow depth of field back yeah. here, you know, but I can't now take it, you know, my glasses, I have another two and a half weeks before I get glasses. So what I'm seeing may not be what you're seeing. Well, um, saying it is in focus. The, the, the have you seen any part of it? Type of photo is it needs an even narrower depth of field than what she did though. But she could have gone ahead and sharpened it up, a, had it, if she put it on a tripod, it would have been sharper. Is what I'm saying. Even with the depth of field out of focus, it still should have been sharper. Maybe it would have been more interesting from a different angle like if she would have been sh shooting up higher and, and, and I mean, down. Looking down? Yeah, looking yeah. down on it. If yeah. that would have been possible. Well, I highly recommend everybody taking a picture. Take, you know, 15, 20, 25. Take it at different angles because sooner or later, you're going to find an angle that shows up that you're going to love. But taking it once or twice or three times the same way, you got to take it at different angles. All right. Uh, uh, this little bunny kitty cat down here is very distracting. <laughs> My eyes keep going to this little kitty cat. Or is it a squirrel? No, that's a squirrel. There's his tail. And I, I think if she would just pop that little part, and make it that's the picture. I, would I, I agree with you. Yes, yeah. if you just crop this around here, you got yeah. a squirrel with a tail. Okay. For me, that's the most interesting part of the picture. Me too. <laughs> me too. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Y'all have to put up with me. I'm sorry. I come with the club. Okay. That's uh, Candice. We're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Boy. 
Yeah, I'm going to leave her to talk about that another time. Suzanne's. I like that. Everybody likes that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Is that another one, one of your country roads, huh? Who? Oh, Suzanne. Me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I probably couldn't even give you directions on how to get there if you'd have <laughs> to follow me. <laughs> but that's just about the second or third time I've been there. You know, I was there in the uh, summer and then I went back to see how it looked in the winter too. Yeah, try to take it on a moody day. I bet that's really gonna be neat if you can go back when it's, the clouds are that moody type of cloud. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It's kind of a lonely road though. I'd probably have to take somebody with me. I'm afraid I'm gonna get um, run over or kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I think it'd be a great one with a different background on it because these trees are they just very interesting. They're, they come out all different ways. This would be a good kaleidoscope. Yeah. Because the background of the clouds in the, in the sky um, is kind of even all the way across. So if you kaleidoscoped it, it would be kind of pretty because the background would all be the same with the dark trees. You know, that is worth trying. Do you, uh, do you know what she's talking about, Suzanne? Well, that's not my photo. Oh, Whose photo is that? That's mine. Andy. That's Andy. mine. Okay. Do you, uh, do you know what she's talking about, Candy, when it comes to the, uh, the cal uh, cal uh, dum dum yeah she does that on some of her artwork and it's really really neat um it's something that uh i'm sure that she'll show everybody again if uh anybody else wants to learn how to do it <clears throat> and yeah. uh, my brain uh, has to be working properly to do that you what I said, my brain has to be working properly to do that. Uh, your brain's always good. What are you talking about? But uh, yeah, she's right. Uh, Just doing some different uh, procedures, even photoshopping it in different ways could really come up with something fantastic. Well, Margie, as far as this photo goes, um, Candy, I'm not sure what was to the immediate right of the right hand side but that trunk that kind of comes out of the side of the frame yeah it, if if you switched over maybe like the equivalent of a couple of foot and that was coming out of the bottom right corner is like the the middle trunk is right now i think the composition would be better i, I, I just for some uh, reason i don't like the tree coming out of the side the main trunk of the tree is further to the side. These are just branches coming out of the tree. So it's further um, to the right side? The main, tr the main trunk of the tree, yeah. Was it hard to maybe move over to get some of the No, I'm, I'm standing in my window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I could okay. Do I wanted to, but... Um, <laughs> that didn't make it better that because I like the feathery parts, you yeah, know, of the branches. I did. And, too. Um, I mean, I, I could, you know, look at it again, but then I might lose what's on the left. Yeah. All this. And I like this on the left. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's like the more you look at it, the more patterns you see and yeah. um, against the uh, pretty sky. It's a beautiful sky. Yeah. And the way the shades of the blue will actually change the color of the branches, I guess you can say. So you have dark all the way to different shades of the branches and very faint little branches through here, which I like an awful lot too. 
Yeah, I've got tons of pictures of that tree because it's right outside my kitchen window. So I have pictures from all kinds of seasons. It's a choke cherry tree. It's an old choke cherry tree. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it is nine o'clock. That'll probably do it for right now. We'll be talking about this one here another day. But I think the others have, we've already pretty much. No, I don't think we've talked about any of them, have we? No, I don't think so. Oh, really? Do you want to talk about a couple of more or do you, I mean, it's no, time I'm, to talk. No, I'm going to Dairy Queen. <laughs> hey, Valentine's Day, I had a whole Dairy Queen cake over here for the G kids. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Then it was good. Did they, come, did they come and get it? Did they ever come over and get it? Oh, yeah. You put that DQ cake in front of them. They are coming. <laughs> they may be a little late, but they are coming. Oh, uh, so they did finally show up? Yep, <laughs> they sure did. They definitely did. It's all gone. It doesn't oh, take sure. much for them. So, well, since he's got to go to DQ. Hey, Margie, while you got that up, just leave the screen right, uh, scroll down a little bit more. Stop here? right there. Yeah, stop right. No, I'm, I'm not going to talk about a picture. On the right-hand side there, you see it says communities to check out. Yep. If you guys want to look at some really cool photographs, check out that one that says R Analog. Those are all right film. Here. These are film, film photographers that are still shooting with film. Oh, um, wow. And I got to tell you, there is some really good photography in there. Um, and if you if you go through it and look at it, I highly recommend joining that that community. You just click join and then it'll show up in your Reddit feed. Um, man, is there some nice stuff in there. Really, really good photography in there. So just a, as a point, I love to look through. Um, I just come in and up in the top left hand corner where it says Reddit. If you just click on that, that'll be your home page. Uh -huh. And if you join that community, you'll start seeing those pictures and man, there's some beautiful stuff in there. Mm. I'll it's definitely all, be joining it. It's all shot on film. Cool. Uh, so, anyhow, I wanted to point that out. Thanks, Marty. Okay. okay. Right. Before we leave, a uh, question for, I guess it's for Annie. Did, did we ever establish a date for the reception at the Latrobe Arts Center? Yeah, we did. Could you tell me what it is? The 8th. Who's ladder? The 8th? Yep. Okay. And, uh, there is no, they are not open on Sunday, so that kind of sealed the deal. So it will be March 8th? Is that what it is? Um, April 8th. April 8th. I'm sorry. So that, that one starts in April. I'm sorry. Yep. I was confused as to what day it is. Okay. Yeah, April. we're gonna we're gonna do it on the eighth. And that was in the newsletter. Oh, was it? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay, Jim. I'll read it the next time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll try to I'll try, I'll put a couple of kaleidoscopes on so Candy knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, we're gonna do April eighth <laughs> from six to eight. Okay. Okay. Now that's it. All right. Hey, Brian, did you have a good birthday? I, well, I worked from nine in the morning till eight at night. So, yeah, it was wonderful. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I, I worked and then I came home and uh, sat on the couch and watched some movies. So, good day. Well, I thought of you on your birthday. Well, I appreciate that. But... Yeah, I was eating some more of that ice cream. <laughs> I, I think actually I did go to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream myself that night, too. <laughs> so. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, 
Okay, well, I've got a series that I want to go in there and watch another episode two. What are you watching, Marge? Outlanders. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that goes up to season four. And Lee Jay is a cliffhanger, so there you well, go. Well, no, they actually can go to season five, and you can get it on season five on Stars, and you can get yeah. Stars for seven days free. Or yeah. go to your library. I'm going to go to the library. They have season five. Yeah. Angel yeah. says she's going to bottle the love that they have and become a billionaire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right all right okay. guys well annie thanks for uh, doing your presentation yeah yeah thanks a Thank lot annie. thanks margie thanks for the uh uh critiquing anytime so um with that being said what do we have next when's our next uh the swig meeting which will be not next thursday isn't it should be uh, Yes. No. So our, yes. our next meeting is next Thursday. So we will not have a Wednesday yeah. night meeting because we'll be here Thursday night. All right. Does that sound good to you guys? Is that okay? Everyone okay with that? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. So I will see all of you guys on next Thursday. And some of you guys I will see on Sunday. Uh, tickets are available. I just purchased mine while we were talking here. Uh, I need to do that. For the Carnegie Museum. So go ahead and if you're still going or if you're planning on going, get your ticket. It's for the 10 o'clock time slot. Um, so other than that, I think that's about it for the evening. Okay. I'll right. see y'all later. See you guys later. Good night. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Good night all. Take care. Good night. Honey, great. Barbara, was nice seeing you tonight. <laughs> yeah, nice seeing you. It was good presentation. Hey, thanks. Yeah, come, very come nice. Back, come back again. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> okay, yeah. good night, everyone. Hi, Gracie. All right. Good night, good guys. Night. Hi, Gracie. <laughs>